Welcome back. We are going to start reviewing for our Chapter 1A test today. It says for the first three questions, solve each equation and state whether the equation is an identity, a conditional, or an inconsistent equation. So when we have a fraction equation like this, the easiest um, method to solve is just to eliminate the fractions. And how we do that is by multiplying everything by our common denominator. So in this case, our denominators are 4 and 2. Our common one, if we were to actually get common denominators, would be the 4. So we're going to multiply everything by 4. When we distribute that to the first piece here, the 4s will drop out, and we just have 2x minus 3. When we multiply that 4 to this one, we can reduce the 4 with the 2 that's in the denominator. We'd still have a 2 left over and the x minus 4 piece. And when we multiply it to the last part here, the 4s again will drop out, and we have the x plus 1. Now notice that we are subtracting that whole chunk, so we would be subtracting the whole quantity x plus 1. Distributing to get rid of our parentheses, we get 2x minus 8 minus x minus 1. Combining like terms, we get x minus 9 on that side, and then getting everything all of our x's to one side, we can subtract an x over, that leaves us 1, and we can add the 3 over, which gets us a negative 6. Now, it's always a good idea to go ahead and check that, um, as long as it's not one of our excluded values, and assuming we didn't make any mistakes, it should work. Um, we don't have any excluded values in this one, because there's no variables in our denominator. So it should work. Um, so we would say our solution is negative 6, and we would call this a conditional equation. It works under the condition that x has to be negative 6. Looking at our second example, notice that we have a denominator here now that has some variables in it. If we think of this first denominator in its factored form, we would have x plus 2 and x plus 4. And now looking at all of our denominators, our common one, that we're going to have to multiply by will be an x plus 2 and an x plus 4. I'll put it on this side since I'm out of space on the other side. All right, when we multiply all of that to this first one, everything in the denominator is going to cancel with those. We just have the 2x left. When we multiply those two to this one, the x plus 2 quantity would drop out. We still have the 2 from the numerator and the x plus 4 that we're multiplying in. When we multiply it to this piece, the x plus 4 quantity drops out. We still have an x and an x plus 2. Again, distributing so we can get rid of our parentheses. And then combining like terms, we have 4x plus 8 equaling x squared plus 2x. I'm going to move everything to the side with the x squared so that I can use factoring to... Um, to solve this. So subtracting a 4x would leave us with a negative 2x on that side, and subtracting the 8 leaves us with a negative 8. And now we can look at that in its factored form. We'd have x minus 4 and x plus 2. And so our solutions, our possible solutions, would be that x could be a 4 or x could be a negative 2. Now we go back and we look at our denominators here, and what are our excluded values? For this one, we would say x can't be a negative 4, because that would create a 0. For this one, we would say x can't be a negative 2, since that would make it a 0. And looking at our possible solutions here, we notice that we said that x could be negative 2, but right here we're saying x can't be negative 2. So this one is extraneous. It doesn't really work. But the 4 is fine. So we would say our solution is 4, and this again is a conditional equation. All right, our next one again has some um, factoring that we should look at. x squared minus 4 can factor into x plus 2, x minus 2. So our common denominator would need both of those factors, x plus 2 and x minus 2. All right. 
Multiplying through by x plus 2 and x minus 2, the x plus 2s will drop out for this first one. We do still have the 4x and the x minus 2 piece. We are subtracting. When we multiply to this one, the x minus 2s drop out. We still have the 8 and the x plus 2. And on the far side here, both pieces will drop out, but we still have the 4x squared plus 16. Distributing, we get 4x squared minus 8x. We get negative 8x minus 16. Combining like terms, we have 4x squared minus 16x minus 16, equaling 4x squared plus 16. Now on this one, notice that our x squareds will drop out, since we have four of them on both sides. We end up with negative 16x minus 16, equaling 16. If we add the 16 over to the right side, we have negative 16x being 32, which means x would have to be negative 2. Going back to our original problem, we look at our denominators. These two are the same as the other two we already circled. Our excluded values, we'd say x can't be a negative 2 or a positive 2. And since our only solution here is one that it can't be, we actually say this is extraneous. There's no solution to this one, so we call this inconsistent. It's really, really important that you check your solutions against your excluded values and make sure you're not listing a solution that truly can't be used. For the next set of questions, we are looking at absolute value equations and inequalities. It says we're going to solve, graph the solution, and use interval notation to express our solution set. So our first one is an equality. Notice that everything on the left side is inside the absolute value bars. So we can go ahead and split it into our two escape routes, as we talked about them in class. So our 2x minus 1, this quantity inside here, could be a positive or a negative 9, because the absolute value bars will turn it into this positive 9. So we need to solve both of those equations, where it equals a negative 9 and it equals a positive 9. Adding the 1 over, we get 2x equals negative 8. And dividing, we've got x is negative 4. On the other side, we add a 1. We've got 2x equaling 10. So x would be a 5. And again, you can check those into the, by plugging them back into our original equation. So our solution set would be the numbers negative 4 and 5. And if we were asked to graph them, we would simply put two dots on our number line to represent our two solutions. Our next one is an inequality. And notice that there are some pieces on the left side that are not inside our absolute value bar. When we talked about it in class, we referred to those as the guards. We need to get rid of them. So our first step would be to subtract the 12. So we have um, it being greater than 14. Dividing out our 2 from the front, we have the absolute value of 2x minus 7 having to be greater than 7. And now we have all of the guards gone. We can go ahead and break out. Because it's a greater than symbol, we need two separate pieces. In other words, we're looking at ways to be farther from 0 than 7 spaces. So we would be looking at these outer sections. And since those do not overlap, we have to have two separate inequalities. So one of mine will be 2x minus 7 is less than, we have to flip the symbol when we make it a negative 7, and our one on the right just matches our original one without our absolute value bars. So we have 2x minus 7 could be less than um, negative 7, which is this chunk here, or 2x minus 7 could be greater than 7, which represents that piece. All right, going to solve this, we're going to add a 7 over. We have 2x is less than 0. Dividing, we end up with x being less than 0. On the other side, adding a 7 would give us 14. Dividing gets us x being greater than 7. So on our graph, we need a 0 and we need a 7. We want to be greater than 7, so open circle and an arrow that way. 
and we want to be less than zero, open circle, arrow that way. Now, when we use our interval notation, we've um, used symbols like this or like this instead. This top one is if it can be equal. The bottom one is if it can't. So our final answer here, using that interval notation idea, would be to put a rounded bracket here and a rounded bracket here. And we want everything going out from there. So with interval notation, our solution would be negative infinity to zero, not including that point, or our union symbol, everything above seven going up to infinity. All right, and our last question today, Notice that everything, again, on the left side is inside our absolute value bars, so we can go ahead and split it right away. We do have a less than. These are the and types where we can put it all together. We want to be closer than six spaces from zero, so we're picturing being everything inside here. So we are connecting it. We can have a connected um, compound inequality. So our expression 2 times x minus 1 plus 8 has to be in between a negative 6 and a positive 6. So we are greater than negative 6, greater than or equal to, and at the same time we have to be less than or equal to positive 6. Simplifying inside here, we've got 2x minus 2 plus 8. Combining like terms, we have 2x plus 6. We can subtract a 6 from both sides. We've got negative 12 on the left and 0 on the right. And when we divide out the 2, we end up with negative 6 and 0. Our x values are everything in between there. So our statement here, since we can include those, we would use the squared brackets. We want everything from negative 6 up to 0, including the endpoints. And our graph then is going to look just like that. We want everything here between negative 6 and 0.